I play Felicity, and we kind of wake up with Felicity in an awkward encounter situation um, with a man she doesn't know and doesn't remember. And without giving too much away, she takes him home to meet her parents. His name is Zamir, which he claims is Irish, but he, and then he says certain things that make you scared of him. So uh, then she's trying to get out of this marriage, which he doesn't want to let her out of, and she has a right-wing nut father who immediately hates this guy. I get radicalized by 9-11, the attacks of 9-11, and I sort of become the liaison with a shadow government headed by a crouching tiger out of the Pentagon. My daughter comes home with a Middle Eastern-looking fellow. Uh, he's very aggressive, and over the course of a few scenes, I think he's a terrorist. The, the plot goes on from there about is he really a terrorist or is he not. You meet a mother who's trying to cope, and one of her ways of coping is to go to the theater. Because theater is life, right? So that's a little bit how she copes and puts people in different plays, so she can sort of manage to live through them. These characters are just, they're completely... I mean, my guy is, is he's, he's, a, he's a minister, half Presbyterian, half Wicca, who's a porn producer. You know, that's, you know, so it's just that run-of-the-mill stuff. The title is, Why Torture is Wrong and the People Who Love Them. And uh, I wanted to communicate that it actually does have to do with torture and, by extension, the war on terror. Um, and yet I do, it is a comedy actually. You know, I read it and I, I laughed so hard. I was reading it on the subway and I laughed so hard that people looked at me like, Shut. and um, then I got home and I laughed again and every day we laughed. There's enough reality and there's enough humanity and heart in them that they're not cartoons. You know, they're, they're real people with real issues and real struggles. So in these really, really funny situations. I was traumatized living through the eight years of George W. Bush, um, a horrible, horrible, horrible president. Um, and uh, in a way, the play allows me to, I don't know, exercise it a little bit. To deal with something like this, like torture, and the <laughs> after effects of that is, um, is interesting, and I think it's funny, I think it's compelling, I think there's real moments of humanity within it that we can all relate to, and, um, and there's a do-over, which I think we're all getting right now, I hope. So, who doesn't want a do-over? Torture can, it never, solves nothing, um, and it hurts people around them, the, the torturers, uh, but in this case, there's no polemic, it's, uh, it's just pure fun. And if you get anything from it, it's, the, it's around the corners of the fun. So it certainly doesn't hit you over the head with it. I hope they had a good time. I hope they laughed. I hope that they got to kind of expunge some of the negativity that may have been permeating all of our psyches for the past eight years. He's very controversial in the sense, in a great way, of bringing up subjects that we are, are uncomfortable with, but saying, you know, if we laugh at them or we present it in a way that we can laugh at, then maybe we'll actually solve some of these things. There are times when you get a little bit like, we can't really go there, can we? Yeah, I guess we're there. <laughs> and you're laughing at the same time. So it's, it's a real skill he's got. It's, it's not where you think it's going to head. So that's what I would say about this play. You're going to start out not knowing what the hell I'm talking about, not knowing what's going on, and then you're going to feel that way for the rest of the play until until the end. But I think you will have had you know a good ride. <laughs>